Hey friends, so here we are with another one skillet meal. Good afternoon friends. So as uh, you got from the intro, one skillet for some meal prep. This is actually going to be multiple meals, but uh, only one pan to fix it all. Uh, it's a Thai inspired curry. So uh, give that with a grain of salt. I did cut back on the spice because I'm not looking to melt anybody's taste buds. Uh, I can add some additional chili flakes on at the end or on my bowl when I warm it up. But let me go through all of our ingredients first because it is kind of a lot, but I really didn't take long at all to get it all ready to go. We have chicken thighs, uh, probably about four pounds. And yes, a lot of chicken curries use chicken breast, but when we are keto, I believe that we all know that we like uh, chicken thighs. A lot so I use the chicken thigh I enjoy the flavor I like the uh, the way it retains some of the moisture all that stuff I also have some uh, bacon fat in my skillet it has been uh, uh, it was rendered and cleaned and whipped so uh, not like overly bacony or anything like that uh, most curry recipes will tell you to use uh, vegetable oil you know that we don't like vegetable oils around here, exception being the fruit oil, avocado oil, or uh, olive oil. So use your judgment, but you're not looking to get a lot of oil from, or a lot of flavor from your oil. You're actually, uh, one of the things about curries and curry inspired dishes is that you're layering flavor on flavor on flavor. And it is a lot of the reason that a lot of palates from the Northern Hemisphere uh, up here, especially in the United States and uh, such, uh, don't always like curries because it is a lot all in one bite. Uh, we're used to, especially here in the Midwest, having uh, small flavors in multiple areas, not all in one dish. It doesn't mean that you won't like it, but it means to have that awareness that it's a large, uh, a large uh, hit on the palate. So I have here three green onions and two jalapenos. Uh, I have basil, uh, Thai basil. Over here I have spinach and cilantro, a lot of cilantro, a lot of spinach. Uh, I, you can use whatever kind of winter squash you want, whether it be butternut or pumpkin. Those are very popular squashes. Uh, they were out of pumpkin, so I got one called a kombucha squash. And uh, it's a little different texturally, but the flavor profile, the nutrition, uh, the vitamins, and the fiber for your gut health are all the same. I've got this a little bit too hot, so let me turn it down. Because I'm like being a chatterbox. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so I also have uh, lemongrass paste, garlic paste, and ginger paste. In this uh, container, I've got salt coriander, black pepper, and curry powder. Curry powder is actually unrelated to actual curry. It's the spice blend that you put in curry. So it's your cumin and uh, your uh, turmeric and uh, a little bit more pepper, but I like extra pepper, so I gr I've ground some more. So uh, I forgot to put my coriander seeds away too, so let's just make sure we get that out of the way for you. The other thing that I have is fish sauce, a very little bit, it's only a teaspoon, you don't need a ton. My curry paste, you can make your own, there's lots of recipes, uh, I can always share one in the comments if you tell me you want one, uh, but also just buy the stuff in the jar. There's nothing wrong with it, it's not some kind of shameful thing, your homemade is not going to be like elevated 9 million times better. Even in Thailand, people buy pre-made curry paste. I just love the way it smells. I 
also have one teaspoon of brown sugar substitute. That's optional, but I do find that since uh, brown sugar is in a lot of uh, a regular, regular uh, red Thai curries, especially if you've made them spicy, that it does add a little something to the flavor. So I do that. I have one can of full fat coconut milk and uh, one cup of chicken broth. So, all right, let's start with seasoning our chicken because that's important for that whole uh, layering the flavors. Get stuff out of the way as we go as well. Uh, that whole how, I mean, you don't want unflavored chicken uh, because we're gonna saute it ahead of time. Now you can also season it a little lighter if you want to uh, simmer it in the sauce, which is one a, a different option. But we're going for quick, fast, and easy, so we're going to pre-season this chicken. Oh no, on my counter. And I used the wrong spatula in here, so we're going to have to take a break and, uh, and, and wash up. But that's alright. It's good, right? We get our chicken nice and seasoned and uh, mixed together, so it has a nice flavor. And also, I will tell you that a lot of times when doing these videos, we would pause and be like, hey, let's, uh, let, let's take a break and I'll come right back when this chicken is cooked. I think that, unfortunately, you're going to have to listen to me ramble because one of the things that I think is super important is to share with you guys uh, how freaking easy it is. Like, it's not going to be instant because chicken still has to cook, but... It's also not going to take forever. So. Scrub, 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 scrub. I don't know about you guys, but I always find that that's a, the most important thing, but the most annoying thing of all is where you have to uh, wash your hands like 30 times while you're cooking. But it is what it is. So, first things first, let's throw our jalapeno and our onion in here and get that going. We'll just let that saute until it's uh, uh, just starting to soften. And I will tell you guys, this is one of the nice things about anything curry, is that it always smells so nice right from the start. And I apologize to you if the sound just went crazy. We just put in a winter humidifier and the fan is variable. So when the uh, it needs to put more water into the air, it bumps the fan up real high to start distributing it. All right, now I have to turn it back up. I'm never happy with the temperature, right? So, one of the things that I love too about uh, to, when you're just starting, with like just like the onions and the uh, and the peppers, or sometimes you know like garlic or things like that, in this first initial bout of toasting, is that it already smells like you're doing something amazing but you're like, it's really, it's literally just onion cooking. So, yeah, let's see. So, I have to think of things to talk about because I didn't pre-plan ahead for all of this uh, having to fill the space, but I think it would be weird to stand here in silence for like, you know, five, 10 minutes. So, but we can talk about the fact that uh, just recent, just uh, yesterday, I put out the video announcing the new peppermint keto chow and when I filmed the video I was kind of tired because I had, hadn't been up that long and I immediately had to hop in and do some work things. I was not excited about that part and so I don't know that I did my best effort on that so I do want to reiterate that I really did think it was quite delicious. I definitely would like to have more of the peppermint keto chow. And I hope that that is one of the ones that they decide to uh, bring on seasonally. Like I would order the heck out of that. So I, if I see in Lazai Fair or disorganized, or whatever, it's just the morning. I was not ready. And uh, case in point, today I'm even having a second cup of coffee. That's usually I have an espresso and a cup of coffee, and then I'm done for the day. But today it's an extra cup. It's been like a really, really rough. Uh, work week and everybody is super high strung and stressed because of the uh, things that are happening. We're going through a heavy duty reorg and uh, the writing is on the wall. Some people are going to lose jobs 
I really hope I don't lose my job, but uh, also it's out of my control. So these are not completely cooked. They still got a ways to go, but we're gonna go ahead and dump the chicken in because that also has to cook. So let's get this all in there. One last stir. And this looks like a ton of chicken, doesn't it? But I assure you, it'll, it'll A, it's, uh, it'll shrink, and B, this is not like, you know, just dinner. This is meals for a lot of the week. And there's some pretty good sized chunks of chicken, but uh, maybe about an inch. Let me see if I can pick one up and show you. Yeah, one piece. So it's like one inch cubes, uh, so much as you can cube a thigh. And but, so like all things, when you know they've got fatty bits and all of that stuff, it'll shrink down some. But uh, I'm looking to make food for a few days. So, that's just how it goes, right? But, you know, despite the fact that this is a lot of chicken, again, I want to reiterate, it won't take that long to cook. Now, back on this squash, though, I can tell you that if you were going to simmer your chicken in the sauce, then you don't need to pre-cook this. However, I'm going for quick and easy, and so I pre-cooked it and I cut it up. Uh, you can buy pre-cubed butternut squash, sometimes they have pre-cubed pumpkin, uh, all kinds of stuff in there. We may or may not need all of that uh, curry paste. Kind of went crazy. So, smells good. And I'm actually really hungry, so I'm sure that's making it smell even better. I don't know if that happens to you, where when you're ravenous or you're very hungry, the food is like even more succulent than usual. But don't get me wrong, this is succulent. And while I'm at it, I forgot an ingredient, so let me grab that real quick. Uh, I'm going to cheat because A, I'm out of lime, but I have lime juice, so let's just go ahead and get a little bit of that. It's better if you do fresh. but. It's not always possible. And we just need what would normally be about half a lime's worth. So like I said, is it a lot of ingredients? Yes. But is it worth it? 100% yes. And once you get everything all chopped up, it's really, as you can see, all I'm doing is stirring stuff in the skillet. So get a big pot, whatever you want to do. Uh, the only thing that might happen is I only open one can of the coconut milk and sometimes, depending on how much chicken broth I use, later I want to add more because it feels too thin. But also I could just put this down all warm and let it reduce, which is a very big possibility. We'll just play it by ear. So at this point, the chicken is about halfway done and so now now that I'm confident that they won't burn, I'm going to add in my paste to get that flavor building. Because you don't want these to be uh, raw flavored. And yes, you can buy all of these pre-pasted or you can paste them up yourself. Uh, again, I want to reiterate, no shame. The only thing you want to be aware of is if you buy it pre-pasted and you're sensitive to dextrose, etc., is that often they have those in the paste for stabilizers. Whereas if you paste your own, it's just the, it's just the a senior ingredient. So, I have my mojajete, and maybe sometime I ought to buy a second one and show you guys how to season it up. Uh, because that way you can get your own and then find out how easy it is to make your homemade salsas in the mojajete or how to make your own paste or all of that stuff. Mm. The lemongrass is super nice. And you can see, well, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but if you were here in person, you would see that the, even with just those pastes, the chicken is starting to get almost like a bit saucy look to it. So, very nice.
I think I already told you guys that I got my gift exchange from uh, the Gen Con gift exchange. I got a copy of Seven Wonders Duel, which I'm super excited because I used to have a copy in my board game library, but it was sadly, as, the, as happens with lending libraries, just got wore out at convention use because it's a very popular game, but it's a two-player version of Seven Wonders, which has an extension that can take it up to eight players, so it can be a party game. So I was super excited by that. And the other game that I got was, despite the fact that it's sometimes hard in these days, I got a copy of a, of a new version of Pandemic. Pandemic, the board game, is probably one of my very favorites. Uh, I have all the versions, and there are a lot of versions. Uh, if this is a, there, it's what's called a cooperative game, where you get uh, character cards, and every, and they, each character has abilities. Each player is responsible for taking the actions for that character, but all of you who are playing are a team, and so you have discussions of like, so, hey, Bob, you're a medic, and you can actually do two actions, uh, you know, and so the, you guys can decide, because there are only like four or five things you can do, and you can be like, it would be really awesome, Bob, can you do this and this? And then Bob can say like, well, I have my heart doing, uh, set on doing this and this. And then you guys discuss uh, the pros and cons and make your choices and decisions. Uh, what happens too is then uh, uh, the bad stuff happens. Uh, you have flipping cards. It tells you where there are outbreaks and how it's spreading. Uh, every so often there's an epidemic and you're racing the clock to cure everything. So uh, pre-2020, this was not such a horrible concept emotionally, but now there are some people who really have a hard time playing it, so we kind of gauge our audience. All right, double check one of these pieces. We are looking pretty good. Not quite, but we're getting there. And it's starting to get like a little bit of uh, liquid and from the uh, paste and the fat coming off the chicken. So we are really getting close now. And I just haven't shut up, so I had to take a minute and pause to take a breath. So, let's see, what else is coming up? So we're making this. Uh, the next recipe that I have, by the way, is even easier. It's another one-pot Instant Pot recipe, and it's a holiday for the end of the year where we'll make some pork tenderloin and kraut, which, you know, is in a lot of places, kind of a traditional uh, New Year's Eve meal, but we like it year round. So, and I've got some little tricks up my sleeve there to share it with you. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to that. I need another drink. All right, next step is let's go ahead and get the chicken broth going. This chicken is really juicing up more than I expected, so I'm not going to use all of this chicken broth. Just some. I'm actually going to wind up using about half a cup, which is fine. I'll just uh, warm this up in a little bit and drink it. Delightful. So now you've got some really bizarre chicken soup, right? No. But uh, no. We just let this uh, simmer for a few minutes before we uh, start adding in more ingredients. But, like I said, very easy, right? So far, we're not working real hard. We're just standing here chatting. You can have all your friends over uh, making these delicious smells, chatting it up in the kitchen, having fun, uh, you know, talking about the cookies that you're going to make this weekend. Uh, enjoying a cup of wine together, a glass of wine. We don't have wine in cups, do we? Not anymore, That may be in our 20s, right? So let's see. So I'm just gonna let this simmer, uh, make sure that the chicken is finished off before we do our next couple steps. 
guys, I'm so hungry that I'm like salivating with excitement, but not quite. Almost there. But as you can see, it has not been that long and we are three quarters done here. Yes, really three quarters because a lot of this only takes minutes. And you can see I'm not working hard. I just kept reassuring you because I want people to know that you can make very flavorful, complex dishes even if you're not an accomplished cook or someone who loves to be in the kitchen a bunch. Uh, honestly, the most annoying part that you're going to have is cutting everything up. And, and that might feel like a lot, but I promise once you just do it and then it's done, you can be like, okay, I'm going to take a 10 minute break before I get in here and do all this cooking. And, but, you know, again, are we doing a lot of cooking? A little bit, but one skillet, you can do that, right? We're not doing more steps than Hamburger Helper other than chopping. And like I said, if you buy pre-cubed up pumpkin, you throw that in when we throw the chicken broth in and let it all simmer and let the, and let the squash cook. So again, not hard at all. And if you buy the frozen, it takes even less time. So, you know, no worries. I feel impatient. Like, I want to let this uh, go a little bit more. I don't know if you, well, you really can't see, but you should know that while this is still very soupy, I can uh, put my spatula through the liquid and it stays, you see the pan for just a second before the liquid closes up on it. And I also want to reassure you that even if it's not like super thick egg, you can continue to let it reduce or B, you can add more of the coconut milk, but the paste will help thicken it up. Your squash will help thicken it up. And if it's not 100% thick, it's not the end of the world. Uh, one thing that I will tell you is that I am far too lazy right now to make kali rice on top of everything else. But you 100%, you could serve this on kali rice, you can have it on top of the keto noodles, uh, you can, I'm actually going to just put a little bit of it into a bowl and then, uh, yeah, and just eat me some sauce, I guess, my chicken curry sauce. So, you know, don't, don't take it too serious. This is not, you know, Gordon Ramsay's not going to come in your house and tell you how it's about to make him throw up because 100% it would. So, all right, here's our next couple steps. Let me get a... One more little spatula so that I'm not putting a dirty spatula into my curry paste in case I don't need it all. But let's take this. We are going to get all of the coconut milk and the fat. By the way, full fat. Full fat. I cannot reiterate that enough. Uh, don't get light coconut milk. It's, uh, your sauce will definitely not thicken up if you do that. And uh, because we are, well, I am a ketogenic eater, I actually need the higher fat content. So right now we've got ourselves a nice little coconut soup, which by the way, this would be a really nice coconut soup. And don't let it freak you out. Yes, there's grease in there. Uh, chicken thighs are fatty. Bacon grease is fatty. Uh, so what? You know, this, uh, this is an indulgent dish and it's delicious. So we'll let this come up to temperature and get my can out of the way. There we go. And next step, let's put half of this in and see how our curry comes along. It's where the, mm, it, it just smells so good. And now we're gonna see, here's where, whoops, we get ourselves dirty. Well, this happens sometimes when we're cooking. And then I'm going to say like, okay, yeah, 100%, I want all the curry paste. But like I said, a lot of it sometimes is just by, uh, you know, you cook, with your, you cook with your heart and your eyes. Uh, and 
I will tell you, you can put whatever kind of freaking vegetables in here you want because we're not doing something that's some kind that's traditional. This is not like, oh, this is how they do it in Thailand. This is absolutely not how they do it in Thailand. This is how we do it in the Midwest. Uh, this is some white people curry-ish. Ish. And that's okay because it's still good. Yeah, I 100% would like to let this reduce some more, but I'm not gonna. So the next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and add my fish sauce. Like I said, not a lot. And that, uh, that salty, fishy umami really plays off that lemongrass and the uh, green onion and the garlic. Next thing we're gonna do is get me a spoon here and a couple spoons for tasting along the way. Make sure that we don't need to add more seasoning. Mm. It's good. I, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more black pepper, but that's because it's my taste. I love black pepper. Uh, technically, I might even want some uh, chili flakes, but like I said, I, I'm trying to be mindful of everyone else here who does not want their food to be made with lava. So we will just keep it mild. This is child friendly. Oh, it definitely needed to be more thick, you guys, but that's all right. It's going to be great. Still, still, still. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my lime juice. And that again, that's why, uh, you know, first of all, coconut milk is more traditional. It's the right flavor profile, but also that's why you're not using, uh, I just threw sauce on my laptop, guys. Give me a second. <sighs> By the way, I'm having a week. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. So it's no surprise. I'm just glad I didn't fling the whole pan over. But... Here we go. And now we can add our little bit of sweetener. That is more sweetener than I want, so I left some behind. And again, uh, brown sugar they, is almost always put in there at the end because it ties in with that uh, with the fish sauce that ties to the lemongrass and garlic and uh, the ginger. So. Uh, Again, it's optional. You don't have to put it in there if you don't want to. But I highly recommend it from a flavor standpoint. But if a sweetener is not your thing, don't worry about it. Just leave it out. I know, tasting number two. Mm. Yes, there we go. And look at that, I saved my spatula before it slid on in. So I think we can tell you, you can tell what's next. This is gonna be our squash. And we're just gonna be like, please don't sploosh it in there. I am making such a mess, you guys. But that's all right. All right, there we go. I was so worried that I was gonna blow and that was gonna just like bloop right out and uh, make a gigantic mess. Uh, I made a little mess, but not a big one. And you can see already that helps with the uh, texture and firmness a lot. Uh, the sauce is thinner than I might like, but uh, I also didn't let it simmer here for an hour. If I wipe up the big dots now, then I just have to go over it with the bleach towels, right? Plus that stuff doesn't have a chance to dry on there. All right, we are getting there. There we go. That squash is getting nice with the chicken. And for the record, you know, because it's high in fat and the chicken is fatty and everything, you don't need a massive ton of it. So if you're worrying about the carbs, uh, again, if you cannot handle the squash and stuff like that, A, you could leave it out and just have the chicken in the coconut sauce. But uh, the Really, a serving of this is going to have like nine total carbs. And that's, even now, we're going to do our greens, which is our cilantro and our spinach. 
I know, right now it's kind of scary. You're like, how much are you putting in that one skillet, Matreya? Are you sure it's a one skillet meal? But if you're familiar with cooking greens, you'll know that this will come in here and wilt right down and everything is going to be just fine. See, it's already coming together. And yes, if you don't like cilantro, leave it out. Add in a, a flat leaf parsley instead. But I will tell you that you definitely will have a whole different flavor profile. But if you hate cilantro because it tastes like soap, you don't want soap in your curry-ish, right? By the way, check it out. Look at this lovely orange, well, it looks kind of yellow on my screen. I hope that you can see this lovely orange color. So, give this just a second. And then we just have, look at that, we're just, we're almost done. It just needs a couple minutes. Mm. I'm gonna grab my little bowl. Yes, I have my spoon in here too. All right, oh, now she's thickening up nicely. Perfect. I was really worried there. I was like, oh, I make this curry all the time and how come now on camera it's not working out? And here it is coming together just right. So there we go. And here's the final and probably one of the most important ingredients, this Thai basil. And I just ripped it up a little bit, but you, they're big pieces of basil. Don't worry, it's going to work out just fine. We just give it a sprinkle. I'm going to turn the heat off. And one quick stir in. And here we go. We are just about there. Fogged up my glasses, guys. So let me get a uh, spoon to put some in the bowl. I'll bring it up close to show you. And we'll be done. Let's see. Yep. One lovely scoop here. Let me get a little extra sauce. Delightful. Extra piece of this nice chicken. All right, I'm coming around to show you up close so you can see this gorgeous color or I'm gonna fog the camera up or pour it on the floor, one or the other. So there you go. And one final taste. It's really hot, so I don't wanna burn my mouth. Mm. Oh my God, so good. Well, I'm gonna just go and package this all up and I'll be good. I'm having a lovely meal. So you guys have a great one. Bye-bye.